My name is Inonge Milupi. I'm from the University of Zambia School of Education, and the, the topic for my study is community-based natural resource management in Zambia, promise, rhetoric, and reality. This is my presentation structure. Community-based natural resource management is an approach used in the management of natural resources worldwide. This approach could promote biodiversity conservation and social economic goals if implemented well. However, there is little research involving reconciliation of environmental and social goals. To judge the efficacy of CBNRM in Zambia, six social and environmental indicators were used. These included protection, the biodiversity protection, empowerment, conflict resolution, gender balance, equity, and local participation. The aim of the study was to assess the performance of CBNRM in Zambia using social and environmental indicators given above. The study areas were Mumba and Lopande GMA. The GMAs were selected because they were considered as prime areas by Zawa as they had have abundant biological diversity and value trophy animals. A prime area according to Zawa categorization is an area with species that are highly valued trophies and are fairly abundant. It also follows that the consumption use of wildlife through safari hunting is the main commercial activity in the two GMA. CBNRM program in Zambia allows Zawa to share hunting lances revenues and wildlife resource management responsibilities with the local communities in the GMA. Zawa collects all the revenues for lances sold and retains 50%, while the other 50% is given to the community, which is shared between the chief and the community development. These are the two study areas I talked about. Mumba is near Kafir National Park, and Lupande is next to North Luangwa National Park and South Luangwa National Park. Three methods of data collection were utilized. These were the interviews with the chiefs, the local communities and key informants, Personal observations were also conducted and literature review. Data was collected from June to August 2014. Questionnaires were administered to 349 selected local people from Mumbwa and Lupande GMA. The semi-structured interviews were done by interviewing key informants from Zawa and chiefs. Data analysis, the structured interviews with local community were analyzed using SPSS software package. Key informants responses were analyzed by summarizing the data into key themes. Local community participation, most of the respondents interviewed believed that they were not involved in the management of wildlife resources. As we can see from the, this figure, where 71.6% said they were not actively participating in community management of natural resources. Also, the extent of devolution leaves much to be desired. 45.8% said they, there was no devolution of power to the local community. And 40.4% said there was less devolution. Conservation of biodiversity, both GMA lacked sufficient information on the ecological studies conducted of threatened and endangered species. Patrols of game scouts in the two GMAs were not performed regularly as the study showed that it was done only once a month. Patrols, however, were only concerned with monitoring of big animal species. In Mumbai GMA in particular, the ecological sustainability of Cafe National Park was questionable as there was a high encroachment of the park by the local people, especially from Mendema chiefdom. Mm -hmm. The encroachment shrank wildlife habitats in the two GMAs. It was therefore impossible for conservation of biodiversity. This is an example of encroachment taking place in Chief Mendema chiefdom which is next which is in Mumba GMA. In Lupande GMA, 73% of respondents agreed to the fact that there is a decline in the forest cover in the area. And in Mumba GMA, 93% noted a decline in the forest cover. 
equal distribution of benefits was also not achieved in the two GMA, according to the key informants who were interviewed. The key informant confirmed that the, the Zawa owed the local community huge sums of money in arrears for non-payment of their 50% shares. This was because all the money realized from wildlife resources went to Zawa, and if Zawa had the deficiency to use all the money and not give the local people their 50% share. Responses from Mumba GMA in relation to empowerment revealed that 71% of local community had no power in the management of wildlife resources in their area. In Rupande GMA, 35%, 5.8% of respondents had no power. Information from key informants also believed that Zawa had more power than the local community. For example, both Zawa and the local people through the CRBs proposed the hunting quarters, but when money became available, Zawa used more of it than the local people. The information from key informants further showed that devolution of wildlife resource in Zambia has not yet been achieved, as Zawa is autonomous and CRBs are controlled by Zawa. Conflict resolution. Key informants responses from responses from two GMAs showed that natural resource conflict usually arose in the two GMAs in several ways. First, damage caused by wildlife to local people's field. Regulations by Zawa also did not allow people to hunt without payment. And lack of compensation scheme by Zawa also affected individuals as it was not provided for in the Zawa Act. The key informants from Zao, however, showed that the authority had, over the years, adopted a number of strategies in order to mitigate human-wildlife conflicts. Gender balance also, the study revealed that most women were not involved in the management of wildlife resources, as we can see from this figure. In conclusion, the evidence from this study of CBNRIM in Zambia suggests the reality often falls far short of the rhetoric and promise of CBNRIM approach. This is because the study showed that for various reasons, CBNRIM in Zambia failed to achieve the aim of the sustainable utilization of natural resources for various reasons. As follows, Zawa did not appear to be interested in the active participation of local community in the management of wildlife resources as revealed by the study. The indication was that they were not involved with the communities in making decisions in the management of their natural resources. There was only partial devolution of power over the wildlife resource from the government to the local community in the two areas. Zawa also failed to become involved in addressing conflicts related to wildlife resources and did not make attempts to compensate those who were adversely affected. Attention was not paid concerning the need to have a balance of gender in organizations responsible for sustainable management of natural resources, such as CRBs. Zawa seemed to ignore the equal distribution of natural resource benefits and biodiversity conservation. Little attention was paid on biodiversity conservation in the two study areas. Stepping from this study, it is clear that if CBNRIM was implemented properly in the GMA, the social and environmental indicators assessed here and the other social benefits attributed to it would be achieved. And therefore, CBNRM would be therefore viable for managing the long-term sustainability of natural resources in the two study areas, and this would improve the understanding of both social and economic development and environmental conservation among the people. The recommendation of the studies are that there is need for Zawa to place more emphasis on conservation awareness rather than just enforcing the law. This could be achieved through regular provisions of training in the two communities. The end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.